Uh-huh. Yo, if I had a hundred sheep and one of them got away, I would leave the 99 and go find that one. That's right. Look from the locks and jaws of Satan, I come creating, penetrating with force from the land of the Lord. Some come like Muhammad got the devil on the run. run. Rise like the sun, keep your eyes on the one. So it's right. base. Then it bring forth a reborn nation up against the norm. Creating a new form. <laughs> soldier, the author of eternity, in an allegorical setting. For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity in action, at the risk of his own life, above and beyond the normal call of duty, somewhere in the Middle East, near a place called Calvary, a soldier stepped out on the battlefield of time, traveling from time into eternity, fighting with the sword called justice. And his birth and surgeon were sent out to seek the unknown, and were met by wise men who had been thoroughly trained in all manner of military maneuvers, such as espionage, sabotage, and subversion, thereby being able to break every code of the enemy and maintain the secrecy of the mission. These wise men later operated under Shadow Commander, known at the time as a little child, whose mission was codenamed Everlasting Life. On the battlefield of time, he worked his way through the ranks, say 42 generations, but was falsely accused and abused by the enemy. But because of his importunity, he continued to fight with the sword of justice. He told the commanding officer of the enemy forces how his life and that of his comrades could be saved. But they laughed him to smoke and said, we have power to kill and that live. He allowed the enemy to carry him away captive but he kept faith in his fellow comrades. Though captured and laughed to scorn, he never relinquished his weapons. When he arrived at the spot called the Place of Skull, he stood bravely though surrounded by the enemy and thought of the training he had received from his commanding officer, and he was not afraid. The enemy placed him on a platform and took his garments, which consisted of a royal robe given him by his commanding officer. By mere strength, bravery, and some unknown ghost to some, he withstood the pain of nails being driven into his flesh. He was looked down on as a soldier, accused of being a devil and degraded as a man. Yet he never deserted nor surrendered to the enemy. As he was suffering and dying, he yelled out to his father, forgive them. Then he bowed his head and gave up the ghost said it was finished. The man in charge of the execution wrote a title above his head in three different languages. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, which may have been classified at the time, but has since been downgraded for everyone that would accept it. This great soldier was rejected, tortured, betrayed, lied on, brought to trial without a hearing, and sentenced to death for a crime he did not commit. Willingly, he gave his life for the wrongs of the world, which was above and beyond the normal call of duty. But he never received a medal of honor. He was wounded many times, but he never received a purple heart. He was the greatest pilot the world has ever known. He even flew himself into his father's house and sat down on the right hand of the master pilot, but he never received a flying cross. He was placed in a borrowed tomb and arose on the third day. But we have omitted his name from among the world renowned upon this planet. He was a doctor. We refused to make an appointment with him. He was a king, but instead of us giving him a crown of gold, we gave him a crown of thorns. He came through 42 generations to abolish the sins of the world. Yet he was rejected and despised by members of his own. And as he hung on the platform of time, we should have placed spices and gifts in his hand. Instead, we drove nails through his hand. He walked more than 72 miles to preach the gospel. And instead of us giving him a new pair of shoes, we drove spikes through his feet. He was a soldier that loved mankind. And after his death, we should have considered a heart transplant. 
Instead, we pierced him through his heart. This great soldier was not an electric clock, but on the battlefield, he kept good time. He was not a nuclear bomb, but his power was devastating. He was not the ringleader of Watergate, but he spoke of a heavenly gate. He was not an MX nor a cruise missile, but his love has cruised the world over. He was not sought out by the vampire world, yet his blood was good to the last drop. This brave, outstanding soldier lived as an angel, died as a thief, and rose to be the mayor of mayors, governor of governors, president of presidents, master of masters, king of kings, and will be crowned lord of all. For his gallantry and heroic action, above and beyond the normal call of duty, we never presented him with the medal of honor, nor the flying cross, not even a service medal. But today we as a people should recognize him as a king of kings, master of masters, supreme and everlasting comrade, beyond the wisest man's comprehension, and truly the son of God. For his ways were not our ways, and his thoughts were not our thoughts. No, there is no metal nor precious stone. We can give a soldier of such royal value, but we can pay tribute by living holy before him, which is our reasonable service. No end, but one soon to come.
wonder who will wait. Bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The balance of this beast must cease. Look out, I see the lines where he said you will see. I wonder who will wait. Bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The balance of this beast must cease. There's a lot of way he said you will sleep. I wonder who will wait. Bring him to his feet. Speak now or forever hold your peace. The balance of this beast must cease. There's a lot of way he I wonder who will wait. Get up, Nine. Did you think he's gonna stay down forever? <laughs> New day. 19-9 Shepard. Beware.